Are jail sentences for those who post hateful messages online fair or too tough? So I'll show you here a picture of a woman called Lucy Connolly. And she was sentenced to two and a half years in prison for inciting racial hatred after posting a message on X during the summer riots. She's got a lot of publicity because she's married to a conservative councillor, OK? So let us see what she posted. And, and it was pretty bad. There she is, Lucy. Mass deportation now set fire to all the swear word hotels full of the... What is that? A sort of some abusive message about migrants. For all I care, while you're at it, take the treacherous government and politicians with them. I feel physically sick knowing what these families will now have to endure. If that makes me racist, so bit. Just to be clear, this is about the, the families of the Stockport stabbing victims in the period where misinformation was published suggesting the assailant was a migrant who'd come on a small boat which he wasn't, yet to see the court case on it, but that's never been suggested in reality. So sh the key bit is set fire to all the swear word hotels, okay, which is it's a, a clearly a criminal tweet, right? But the problem is this, that Connolly, who's, who took her tweet down after three and a half hours, is going to jail for 31 months. So she's got, and, and the punishment of the people who rioted, some of them got less, I'll show you Stacey Vint, now, you may say Stacey Vint shouldn't be in prison. This is Stacey Vint here. She wheels a smoking wheelie bin at the police and then falls flat on her face herself. She got 20 months for violent disorder. But let's stick with Connolly. That's quite a sentence, isn't it, for one tweet? It is quite a sentence. And I want to start off by saying that I think what Lucy Connolly said was racist and it was inciting violence and that is absolutely illegal and people should be punished for saying things like that. However, at the same time, a 31-month sentence for a tweet, when a couple of weeks ago, Jeremy, I think, in fact, the last time we were on your, I was on your show, we spoke about the fact that Hugh Edwards wasn't going to prison for the, the paedophilic images that he, he had downloaded. There's something seriously wrong with the criminal justice system in this country if it is not sending paedophiles to prison, but it is sending people who post things on Facebook for a couple of hours and then take it down to prison for, for 31 months. Yeah, and, and one of the things that happens online a lot with, you might call it abusive messages on Twitter, X, etc., is somebody says, excuse me, that's really abusive and horrible, or maybe it incites violence. And the person who sent the message says, oh, it's just hurty words. You're complaining about hurty words. Now, we know that actually hurty words can be criminal. We know that. Can be libelous, can be criminal. Here's an example where she's properly been punished for words, properly. But it might feel too much for you. No, I don't think so. I don't think we should ever think that what she did at the time she did it, in the situation we were in, it's not just racism or an expression of racism. She was inciting violence at a time when violence was happening. And when spreading misinformation. people were trying yeah. to burn down yeah. hostels, okay. which even Keir Starmer, who doesn't usually defend asylum seekers, said in his speech a couple of weeks ago, there were human beings there. Mm. They were in real danger. If this same tweet, for example, had been about set fire to the this, this MP, my constituency MP, because he doesn't care about us. What would we say? People would immediately understand we've had MPs dying. There was a genuine risk of violence, which was already happening. I think it's absolutely the right sentence. Do you? Do you? OK. Well, we love your calls on this. 0207 862 Not suggesting this, that, you know, you can excuse what she said. It was a disgusting tweet. It did say set fire to the hotels with the migrants in. However, it was only up for three and a half hours. She obviously realised she committed a crime, put the wind up her. She took it down. Maybe she was in drink or something. I... <laughs> Would that be mitigation, no, by the way? No, no? No. Drunk tweeting? No, and I'm, I'm with you when I wonder why the woman who actually was pushing that uh, burning... Stacey what, Vint. Yeah. She should have had more. You think more? Because yeah. I... Uh, but at a time, Yasmin, when we are seeing quite 
serious violent criminals in some cases wrongly being released from prison early. Can you seriously say it is it is a good use of state resources, yes. of, of yes. government resources, yes. to lock up a woman yes, because, for more than two years yeah, for a yeah, tweet? I do think that because I think what happened that time was so scary, so, you know, so vile. Yeah, but that you arrest the people on the ground, surely, who are no, doing the violence. No, inside, listen, we have lived through histories where words incited the Rwandan massacres, where words incited the war in Bosnia, where wars are being, you, words, I mean words incite, words have an effect. She wasn't just saying, I hate asylum seekers and I hate the killer and why did we take, she was saying, go set fire. Mm. And, and actually, I'll be, maybe we're playing down the power of words, maybe, I was involved in a case of a guy, it's quite a famous case actually, called Alex Belfield, who'd used a yeah. TV channel, a YouTube channel, to just insult uh, and harass enormous numbers of people, but certainly more than a dozen. He's serving a five and a half year jail sentence because the judge had to sit and listen to the effects of his words on the victims over five and a half weeks, the judge sat there and in the end thought, I'm gonna give this guy a serious prison term. And, and yet his followers say, oh, it's just words. I'm not sitting here saying that words and things people say should not be criminalized. I do think if you incite violence, there should be a punishment for that. I do think if you are racist, there should be a punishment for that. My question is, is whether or not at this time when we know that the prison system is overwhelmed and is releasing prisoners early who have done much worse things than send a horrible tweet, if it is appropriate to send a woman to prison for more than two years for sending a tweet that was up for a couple of hours. Mm, I, it's the scale of the punishment is it, is that it, I just Because the, the other thing that happens, Yasmin, in this debate is often you get this comparison. And actually, the Edwards, the Hugh Edwards case is being used now as a comparison. I don't well, know, I how do you think? He should have been He should have been jailed. Yeah. yeah, absolutely should have been jailed. And his status protected him, in my view. But the status should be an aggravating factor because, because that is when somebody who's a exactly. teacher, for example, yeah. abuses yeah. them. And you could say when someone is a news No, I would not disagree that yeah. Hugh Edwards absolutely deserved. Should have gone to jail. And when he packed a suitcase. And excuses he made yeah. for himself. But actually what was interesting about the Hugh Edwards case is that people that commit crimes like Hugh Edwards very rarely go to yeah. jail. It wasn't his status that stopped him from going to jail. The person who supplied him the pictures didn't go to I jail. that was amazing. So Hugh Edwards couldn't go no, to jail. No, I thought that I thought the fact that yeah. the person who supplied Edwards with the pictures didn't go to jail, I thought was incredible. I don't, it may be because it was a first offence, because he pleaded guilty. Collins in Staffordshire. Colin, do you think this is too much? 31 months for the single tweet. No, it's perfectly all right. She did the crime. She must do the time. It's as simple as that. But sentences sometimes are wrong, right? And an example would be the famous canoe man case, John Darwin. Six years that guy got for pretending to die. Yeah. Look at what, the, look at what this woman wrote. What she was trying to do. She was trying to incite other people to kill other people. It's as simple as that. You know, you, we have a problem in this society with racism. We know that. It's endemic. We know we've got to try as best as we can to get rid of it. This woman was doing a dreadful thing. A dreadful thing. Suppose, and, I mean, Yasmin and, is right to say, if, you, if she, you, you transpose that into, let's say she called for people to go round to the home of a particular MP and set fire to it, and the MP was at home with her husband and their four children, you'd definitely want a long sentence for that. You're right, Colin, to say, why is it different if it's a hotel full of migrants? There might be something about the way we think. Yeah, we, we've dehumanised asylum seekers and migrants them. to such an extent. And the good thing was that people came out in their defence. But, you know, for this woman, and she's married to a counsellor. Well, that's the thing. He says she's sorry, by the way. The, of course, the people are always sorry when they get arrested. Tom in Essex, <laughs> hi. Hi, morning, Jeremy. Um, I feel very strongly about this, Jeremy. Most people think that the Prime Minister acted with, uh, um, you know, correctness. I don't think he did, Jeremy. I don't think he did. It's exactly the opposite. Firstly, on a lower point, he increased the number of people going into prison when the prison cells were full. 
Yeah. So that was coincidental, but I won't hold that too strongly. The one I do hold against him is, did he speak to the judges and say, impose a severe sentence, no matter what? And I think that is constitutionally, I don't know about law, but it feels that. wrong to me. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's he been the, he would understand the separation of powers because he's been the head of the, the CPS, the Crown yes, Prosecution Service. Yes, absolutely. So, I, so I, I, no, I don't think that, but he can give political messages, which is just as powerful, which is where he says, I'm the prime minister and I want to see these people going down for 10 years. He's perfectly able to say that. He can't call anyone up on the sly. But do you think our sentence is too long? Absolutely too long because what you, you, when you get serious uh, about some a rape, a child molester, whatever, that's going to rocket high, and it should do. But there's going to be in between us, and he, you know the the, the 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 jails are going to be overflowing with prisoners because of what he's done. Okay. I think the wise thing to have done was to commit community service to those so that they remember. They faced the damage they'd done and they helped to put it right. That would be the wise thing to have done. And I think that'd been the right thing to be done. Thank you, Tom, very much. After the